It's a beautiful day today and we're reading some more Am I the Yay Ho? We had Am I the Devil yesterday, which was so fun. Today's episode should be pretty similar, but not every post is going to be an A-hole today. But I'm definitely going to try to find some that are the A-hole. And yeah, it's going to be a wonderful time and I hope you guys are excited. Am I the a for filming my wife while she got stung by bees? Wow. <laughs> That's the way that we're going to start today's episode. My wife and I were enjoying some beautiful spring weather today out on our deck. I was sitting in the sun reading a novel while my wife was tending to her flower garden. We were having a great time, but suddenly my wife started yelling out in pain. I looked up and I saw her running across our lawn and swatting. It was clear that she was being stung by bees. I wasn't going to go over there since I didn't want to be stung. So I sat at a safe distance on the deck. After a few seconds of watching this, though, it became sort of humorous to me. It became humorous to you that your wife was being stung by bees. Okay. My wife was running in circles and looked ridiculous. I grabbed my smartphone and I started to record her. She finally ran to the gate, removed her clothes in the garage and went straight into the shower. I went into the bathroom and I asked her how many times she'd been stung. She said, I think 10. I know that she isn't allergic, so there would be no point in offering any Benadryl. After showering, my wife took a nap. As she slept, my 15-year-old son got home from a friend's house. I showed him the video I'd taken because I thought he'd find it entertaining, but he wasn't laughing and instead seemed concerned and angry at me. I assured him that I made sure she was okay, but he called me a jackass and said that he was going to tell my wife when she woke up. Well, he told her and now neither one of them will hang out with me. I've tried to joke about the experience by making buzzing noises near my wife, but she just sighs and goes into the other room. Oh my god. <laughs> it's important to be able to laugh at yourself, but she's taking things too serious. No, she's not. I just want them to stop being so dramatic and judgmental of me. This treatment just sucks. Am I the yay hole? Of course you're the yay hole, and they're not being dramatic. Sometimes I can't tell if they're joking. You made buzzing noises around your wife? Oh, that's so funny. What? <laughs> that's not funny, and they're not being dramatic. The top comment says, you the yay hole. And you lack a little decency towards your wife, especially if your 15 year old can tell that your behavior was off, especially to record her. And making jokes such as buzzing sounds? Get a grip. Yeah, how do you act like that? And then be like, oh, but I'm not the yay hole, right? Are you joking? Of course you are. Wow, infuriating start to the episode. Am I the a-hole for not wearing the wedding dress that my stepsister handmade for me? I, 25 female, got married two weeks ago. First of all, congratulations. My now husband, 27 male, and I paid for most of the wedding, but my father covered a few costs for us. My father's girlfriend, Stella, has a daughter, Zoe, 21 female, who's finishing her degree in fashion. She wants to get into the wedding dress industry once she graduates. When I started planning my wedding, she offered to design and make my dress. I was hesitant at first, as I'd been excited about picking out my own dress, and I agreed because I didn't know Zoe well. My father had only been dating her mother for two years and I thought this would be a nice opportunity to bond. Also, I'd seen some of her work. She'd made a couple of ball gowns in college and she seemed good. We met up a few times to discuss our ideas. During those, I realized our styles were drastically different but we were still able to agree on a design. I gave Zoe my measurements and I asked her to update me. She didn't. Whenever I asked her how she was doing, she'd say that she'd send me progress pictures when she got home and she never did. It took her longer than I expected to finish it and I didn't get the dress until a month before my wedding and it looked nothing like the design that we'd agreed on. It was the wrong color, the wrong style, everything. It looked exactly like the type of dress that Zoe would want to wear but I knew I'd never wear anything like it. I really did not like that dress. When I tried it on I found out that it was also about three sizes too big though I knew that I could probably have it altered. I truly did not want to wear that dress on my wedding day. I called Zoe and I told her that I wouldn't wear the dress. I said it looked lovely but it's not the style that we'd agreed on and I thought it would be best for me to find a different dress. I offered to pay her for her work. She's made the dress for free, but she declined and she hung up on me. I went to a retail bridal store with my maid of honor and we found a beautiful gown that didn't need much altering. It looked exactly like what I wanted. Fast forward to my wedding, I walked down the aisle in the dress I bought. Zoe seemed to be on the verge of tears during the ceremony and Stella gave me dirty looks during the reception. When I approached them a while later, they were both short with me. My father, Stella and Zoe left less than an hour into the reception. Oh, that's not fair. My father and Stella called me the next day and told me off for how I treated Zoe. This had been her first time making a wedding dress and she'd been excited to see me wearing it. That does not mean that you have to wear it. They said it was insulting of me to not wear the dress. Oh my god. It's OP's wedding. It's not about Zoe. They said it was insulting of me to not wear the dress that she'd put so much effort into. I tried to explain why I hadn't worn the dress, but they're both insisting the dress was beautiful and I could have sucked it up. Uh, no. <laughs> oh, this is so frustrating. My husband and my younger sister, not Zoe, are on my side. I've been feeling guilty about this since I decided not to wear the dress 
address. Am I the a-hole? No, you're not the a-hole, OP. And this is ridiculous. What the hell is Zoe thinking, for real? If Zoe's gonna make stuff for people in the future, they're not always gonna like what she makes and she needs to make what the client wants. That's so frustrating. And for them to say to you to just suck it up and wear it on your wedding day anyway, even though you don't like it, that's hilarious. Of course you shouldn't wear something on your wedding day that you don't like. Yeah, the top comment, not the a-hole. Zoe disrespected you by ignoring your wants. As a designer, she needs to listen to her clients. Plus, her making the dress way too big means that she isn't even that great at it. Give the dress back to Zoe and let her know that you appreciated the effort, but this was not the dress that you wanted and the two of you agreed on. That you're sure she'll find somebody to appreciate the dress. As for her mum and your dad, let them know that Zoe needs to listen to her clients and that you appreciate Zoe's efforts. It was not what you wanted and that as a client, you don't need to suck it up. Yeah, that's the stupidest part. And that they should have learned to accept that people have a right to make their own choices, especially regarding a wedding dress. I'm wondering if Zoe did this on purpose to get attention during your wedding. Yeah, you are so not the a-hole OP. And yeah, it is disrespectful of Zoe. Like, hey, you're gonna have clients in the future and they're not gonna like everything you make. That's the reality of it. And if you're just gonna get all crabby and then hang up on them on the phone, you're not gonna have much fun working with people. That's so immature too. And what the hell are the other people doing saying that you should suck it up? That's not how that works. Oh, that one's so annoying. OP, you didn't do a thing wrong. And it sounds like you were super polite to Zoe too. And you were trying not to hurt her feelings. Her feelings, which by the way, should not have been hurt anyway. Like you didn't like the dress. Okay, let's fix it or make something different. Like that's a part of the process. And there's no way she's ever going to be able to work with anybody if she can't accept it when they don't like something that she makes. That's wild. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. The thing about being a designer, especially a bridal designer, is listening to the bride and what sort of dress they see themselves in. You likely didn't get any progress photos because she knew that this was her style, not yours. It was your day and your desire should have been honoured. She never prepared you for the fact that it was nothing like what you wanted. She made your day all about her and your father should have had your back. Yes, yeah, Zoe and your dad and Zoe's mum should all be apologising to your OP. That's unbelievable. The next one is called, Am I the A-hole? My 39 female, ex-husband, 37 male, is insisting I change my last name back to my maiden name because his new fiance, 24 female, feels it'd be awkward for her and I to have the same last name. Am I the A-hole for refusing to change it? My 39 female, ex-husband, 38 male, has been dating this woman for three years. For context, she's a 24 year old. My ex and I were married for 12 years and we've been divorced for five. We have three kids together who are now teenagers. My ex and I got divorced because we were young when we met and got married and we grew apart as people. It was a mutual decision and we agreed that our kids came first and we've always co-parented very well. This has been the case up until last year when his girlfriend moved in with him. Previously, we would do holidays and kids' birthdays together. Now when she's present, they won't even sit near me at our kids' sporting events. I've always been nice to this woman, despite my kids expressing they do not like her and they feel that their dad acts differently when she's around. My ex told me early on that she wasn't a fan of me and felt that I intimidated her. When I asked him for examples of how I intimidated her, he said it's my face, that I've got a resting B arch face and it makes her uncomfortable. My ex and her got engaged over Christmas and my kids were less than thrilled. My daughter especially. She feels her dad made a major life decision without even talking to them about it first. My ex called me yesterday saying that he's giving me a heads up that I have a year to change my last name back to my maiden name. As his fiance is expressing her distaste and concern for her and I have the same last name when they get married. I told him that we agreed in our divorce that I could keep his last name until I felt the need to change it. And that's what's listed in our paperwork. I also told him I don't want to have a different last name than our kids. He said that I'm being unreasonable and refusing to see how this would make his fiance uncomfortable. I told him that I can't see it from her side because I'm a grown up and I'm not an immature child like she is. He told me that I could ask anybody about this situation and everybody would agree with her. So am I the a-hole for refusing to change my last name to make her happy? Wow, that's so funny because it's marked as not the a-hole. So yeah, obviously if you ask anybody, they're not gonna agree, dude. Like this comment says, not the a-hole. He told me I could ask anybody about the situation and everybody would agree with her. You should definitely send him a link to this post. I'd be surprised if anybody sides with him. I don't blame you for wanting the same last name as your kids. I wouldn't blame you if you had no kids and you simply didn't want to deal with the name change hassle again. And if she doesn't want to share a name, hubby can change his name to match her. Yeah, you're so not the a-hole OP. And yeah, definitely send this to them so they can both read it. And also like this comment, when my parents divorced, my dad demanded that my mum change her last name back to her maiden name. And he told that to the judge. The judge laughed in his face and told him that's not his or her decision. It's my mum's. My mum told him that she didn't have his last name. She had my last name. The whole reason she wanted to keep it was to have the same last name as me. Not the a-hole. Yeah, you're for sure not the a-hole OP. So frustrating that they think they're right. The next 
next one is called, am I the a-hole for paying for my son's entitled girlfriend to come on a cruise with us instead of their cousin? We went on a family cruise that has become a yearly tradition. The only difference is my son, who's 18 years old, wanted to bring his girlfriend Morgan this time, and we said it sounded like a great idea. We paid for her trip and everything she'll need, and it was pretty expensive. Because of this, we couldn't pay for our niece, 16. Her parents don't have much expendable money. They are pretty poor, and she was unable to come to this trip. We promised that we'd go on another cruise during summer and pay for her to come. I felt bad that we couldn't bring her, but we wanted our son's girlfriend to feel welcomed. Well, she has been a little difficult. I had met her before and I thought she was a lovely girl, but I got a completely different interpretation of her on this trip. When she first saw her room, she said she was expecting more and it seemed small. That really rubbed me wrong, but I ignored it. My son told me that she came from a wealthy family. My kids were sad that their cousin wasn't there, but I told them to spend time with Morgan. Unfortunately, they've been getting into fights. Morgan yelled at my kids because they used a handicap elevator, specifically designed for disabled people. She said it was rude and entitled. My kids pointed out that they got lost and they had no idea where they were. They found the elevator and they decided to take it up. They said no disabled people were using the elevator, but if they were, they would have given it up immediately. But Morgan said that it was really entitled and crappy of them. I'm not sure I understand her logic here. It seems like she's starting fights over nothing and I'm confused why she's parenting my kids. She's been getting into multiple fights with my daughters who were exhausted of her. I overheard them talk about how awful she was at dinner and approached them to tell them to shut up. People can hear them and we don't want Morgan to feel unwelcomed. They said they were tired of her. She was super entitled and still complaining that we didn't spend money on a better cruise or better things to do. Unbelievable because the cruise was like two grand each person. They said I was an a-hole for leaving their cousin at home and inviting this entitled person instead. They said their cousin should be here, not this lady. I told them we need to show support to their brother's relationship, someone that could be a part of the family one day. I'm sad to leave my niece home too. Am I the a-hole here? I definitely see where OP's coming from. But they should not be bloody protecting the son's girlfriend. Like if she's being rude and awful, somebody needs to say something. Yeah, the top comment. You the a-hole if you feel that this girl will be a part of your family when they're both 18. The girlfriend is also an a-hole for acting like she is. I dealt with people like this. Somebody who feels like their crap doesn't stink and that their way is the only way. Avoid at all costs and if you can't let them fail and fail hard, maybe they'll get humble. I like this comment too. I think people are a bit harsh here calling you the a-hole. You said that you met her before and she seemed nice. Looks like her true colours have come through. You've made the mistake of doing a nice thing for a stranger and I'm sure you won't make that mistake again. Bring the cousin next time. Also, let your daughters call the girlfriend out on her crap. With any luck, your son will start taking this on board and make a good decision. Read the future of their relationship. Not the a-hole for making a choice based on the information that you had available at the time. Yeah, call her out on it. People like that are so bloody frustrating. And oh, I come from a wealthy family and I'm going to complain that this is too cheap of a cruise. Well, maybe pay for a different one, you know? Like, you don't act like that. That's super awful. This one's a good comment too. I don't really understand your question. Are you really asking whether you're an a-hole for inviting a jerk along on vacation? Because that's what the title says. Of course you want. You didn't know that she was a jerk when you invited her. However, I don't want to give you a verdict if not the a-hole because I think you were way off base with how you handled the situation with your daughters. Your idea of just don't say anything, keep the peace is exactly the wrong way to handle a friend or family member who's being a jerk. So they just get to keep on being a jerk for the rest of the vacation and even the rest of your lives and everybody else shuts up and takes it forever. In fact, just ignore it and don't say anything is reasonable regarding the bad behavior of a total stranger who you're never going to see again. The bigger a part of your life somebody is, the worse that strategy becomes. So I say you the a-hole for the question that you didn't ask. Edit, I said you the a-hole, but I should have said everybody sucks here because obviously Morgan sucks too. Okay, story number five. Am I the a-hole for refusing to take any responsibility for my dog until my wife was forced to rehome him? I'm going to lay this out in the most basic way I can. I work from home, as does my wife. She wanted a dog. I said we don't have enough time to take care of a dog. She pestered me until I agreed. We took our time and we found a rescue that had several pups that met our needs. Small, adult, requiring just a couple of short walks a day. They did home visits and stuff. It was taking a while. During that time, my wife found a farm that had working blue healer and border collie pups. She got me one for my birthday. I had one just like her when I lived at home with my parents. She's a beautiful puppy, but not in any way that we agreed on. We live in an apartment without a yard. My parents have acreage. I'm very busy. I don't have time for all the training and exercise that she needs. I told my wife, thank you, but no thanks. And she refused to listen to me. So I just refused to bond with the pup. I didn't even name her. I told my wife that I would make sure the pup was fed and got two half hour walks a day since that's what we agreed on. Everything else was on her. It took two weeks of barking, chewing and pooping until she rehomed the pup. Now she's mad that I manipulated her into doing what I said that we should do to begin with. She said she thought I'd love the puppy that was like my old one. If we had the space and time for it, I would have. I'm pissed that I even had to do it. I feel bad for the dog and I'm thinking of not even doing the rescue now that I know more about how my wife thinks.
things. Oh, yeah, you're not the a how OP. And you did not manipulate her. OP said in the comments here, she's at home with my parents. They're training her. And since my dad is retired, he likes having a buddy around. She's happy out there. My wife is just pissed that she paid for my parents to get a dog. Well, hey, maybe don't get a blue heel across border collie in an apartment. <laughs> yeah, like this comment said, all I had to read was blue heel across border collie and apartment with no backyard to know that you're a hundred percent not the a hole. That's not a dog that belongs in an apartment, especially only getting two half hour walks a day. You agreed to terms, your wife violated them, and that's completely on her. I hope the pup and your dad have a lovely friendship and they're both happy together, and your parents have tons of space to let her run until her heart's content. Yeah, definitely. It's in no way your fault, OP, and so irresponsible of your wife. Yeah, like this comment, not the a hole. And what the hell was your wife thinking? She obviously has no idea what responsible dog ownership actually is, and I'm assuming that she figured that you would fall in love with the puppy due to nostalgia and willingly take on all of the work. I see people offering advice on what you could have or should have done, but the post makes it seem like there was no reasoning with your wife. She proactively and unilaterally decided to do a dumb crappy thing to that puppy and deserves 100% of the blame here. Yeah, that's so wild. I can't even imagine how energetic and high maintenance the dog could be and trying to make them live in an apartment. That's not okay. And yeah, you're not the yay hole OP. Okay, post number six. Am I the yay hole for leaving for the weekend after my wife agreed to host Easter at our house without consulting me? My wife, 38 female and I, 39 male, have been married for 12 years and we have three kids, 11, 8 and 6. We live reasonably nearby to family on both our sides. Our house isn't huge by any means, but it is big enough for our family. However, nobody else on my wife's side of the family lives in a house. Her siblings all either rent homes with roommates or live in apartments. Her parents downsized into a smaller townhouse about five years ago. As a result, anytime her family wants to get together for a holiday or a special occasion, we're the ones who end up hosting. It's not even a discussion with her family anymore. Everybody just assumes that we're going to be the ones who host. We at least rotate major holidays between my family and hers, but my siblings and parents can also host gatherings, so hosting duties are spread out among all of us. But every Thanksgiving, Christmas, 4th of July, Easter, etc. that we spend with her family, we host, and her family are not the best guests. They will bring food if we ask, but anytime there's cleanup or any other help, they're nowhere to be found. I've expressed my dislike of this arrangement to my wife numerous times. She's insisted that I not say anything to her family about it and to let her handle it. However, nothing ever changes. Yeah, well, she's not handling it. We hosted Christmas for her family this year and it sucked. People showed up late, forgot the food that they were supposed to bring. Nobody was helping clean up. People were letting their kids make messes. Same old story as every other time. After that, I told my wife I was done. I told her I don't want to host her family until somebody else on her family steps up and hosts something. Or we book some other venue and we all chip in to pay for it. She promised to talk to her family about it and figure something out for next holiday. For Easter this year, we were supposed to have it be just our family. No extended family. But a couple of weeks ago, my wife met up with her mum and sister for lunch. When she got home, she informed me that she did talk to them about how hard hosting Christmas was. She said her mum and her sister agreed that they would do better. And they offered to prove it to us on Easter and my wife agreed. We got into a huge fight over it. I tell my wife that she's on her own for this one. I told her I'd be spending the entirety of Easter weekend with my family and I'll take any kids with me that want to come. But I'm not going to be helping with any of the hosting duties whatsoever. She thinks I'm overreacting and that I need to give her family this final chance because her mum and sister seemed really sincere during their talk. I told her, I don't care what they say. I'm not going to be involved at all because I won't be able to hold my tongue this time and I don't want it to come to that. She's not happy with me at all, but I don't really care. To top it off, all of our kids want to come spend the weekend with me instead of staying home. Nah, not the a-hole OP. Your wife talked to her mum and her sister. She didn't talk to the rest of the family. Like, you don't know that they're actually going to do any better or try harder. It was only those two that she talked to and she also shouldn't be saying yes to making these plans without talking to you first. Yeah, no, I don't feel like you're the yay hole Yeah, the top comment, not the yay hole I don't think your wife is being firm enough with her family. And even if she is trying to negotiate some improvement out of them, it was out of line for her to agree to it without even talking to you. It sounds like she's taking you for granted. This might be her handling it, but it feels a bit too little too late to expect you to host yet again, just to give the family another chance, especially when she committed without even talking to you. And without even knowing the family, I can't say that I've got a lot of faith that any improvements they demonstrate this weekend will actually stick. The answer is that you guys should not have to solely face hosting duties. In fact, you should not be hosting at all unless you're both bought in. End of story. I think the issue at hand though is that even if this weekend is far more pleasant for you because you're just not there, it's still unresolved. Won't this just come up again at the next holiday? Are you going to take your wife at her word if she does tell you after Easter that it was any better? I think you have more talking to do with your wife. And sadly, I think the line might be that you discontinue hosting for the foreseeable future or that you're leaving every single time that she signs up to host. Yeah, and I also like this comment. Not the yay hole Not once in my marriage have I come home and told my 
husband that we were hosting a holiday. It's something you as a couple discuss and you come to an agreement. You told your wife you were done hosting her family until somebody else in the family steps up. You were clear and concise. If your wife wants to host her family, you're not stopping her. You're just not going to be there either. Post number seven is called, Am I the gay hoffer refusing to pick up a kid from elementary school? I'm a mum to two sons, one age six and the other age eight. They both attend the same elementary, so pick up and drop off is easy for me. I'm married, so I am mostly a stay-at-home mum aside from a part-time job I have teaching kids piano. Recently, my older son has become quite good friends with another kid in his class. He wanted to have a play date with him, so I got in touch with his mum to organise it. I did manage to meet the kid's mum, and she seemed pretty responsible for my impression. The week after the play date, I was picking up my two sons from school, and the eldest had brought his friend with him. I asked him where was his mum, and he told me that she told him to just go with Daniel, my son's name. Obviously, that was wildly irresponsible from her part, so I called her, but it went straight to voicemail. Obviously, I wasn't going to leave the kid alone at the end of school, so after repeated attempts to contact her, I just took him with me home. She later contacted me about two hours after school finished, asked me where her kid was, and then came to collect him from my house. I asked her why the hell she had done that, and she said that she was a single mum and couldn't pick him up in time due to her Pilates class. I was so pissed as she used me for free childcare and assumed that I had no responsibilities of my own. I told her not to do this again or I'd report it. A few days after, and guess what? My eldest comes to the car with his friend. I asked him where his mum was, again, and he told me that she had instructed him to go with my son again. At this point, I got out of the car with all the kids and I went to the reception to tell them about the incident and I left him there. I got a call after school from his mum with her swearing and berating me, calling me every name in the book, saying that I got her in trouble with the school. We got into an argument and I hung up. After this, she made a Facebook post about me calling me out and calling me a selfish a-hole. I really don't know what to do and I really want to know if I was the a-hole. Edit, thank you for all the replies and advice on what to do. I replied to the post she made about me and I wrote my side of it. Needless to say, she was pissed and she replied to it, cussing me out and told me that I should have been more understanding. However, surprisingly, two other mums who also have kids in the community and school have reached out to me and they told me that she'd done the exact same thing with them. Their kids will become friends with her kids. She would get to know them a bit better and then pulled the same stunt and not reply to calls. However, they were both smart enough to not pick him up and just bring him to the office, something I wish I'd done the first time now. As a group, we assumed that she was just doing the same thing again and creating the same safety issue. So we all decided that after Easter break, we're going to the office to make them aware of all of us and what happened with her. Yeah, hell yeah, OP. Good luck with that. I don't think I ever need to say that you're not the a-hole. The absolute audacity of that kid's mum. Like, oh, you made me miss my Pilates class. Get the hell out of here. Come on. Yeah, that's enough for today. Let's read something wholesome. Last night, I realized that if you start inexplicably clapping when one of your friends arrives at a party, everybody else at the party will start clapping too. It's the perfect wholesome prank. 10 out of 10, highly recommend. Yeah, that's so cute. Round of applause for this absolute legend. When my friends thank me for supporting them during their tough times. Want to see me do it again? Yeah, how beautiful. Always here for you, buddy. Just like Doe, you can rise if you rest. Wow, that's so true. I never even thought about that. That's a really good message. Look after yourself. Me, me after I do the dishes. Yeah, how true is that? Oh no, my shirt is wet. Hey, you look really cute today. April Fools, you look cute every day. Keep it up. Oh, a cute April Fools prank. You're too kind. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope you had a wonderful time. And if you did and you want to see more videos like this, make sure you like and subscribe. And the comment of the day today goes to Mama Mia and Kiddo Kelsey. Your comment section is a bad influence. I'm now also part of the Baking Cookies on a Whim Club. Enjoying my vegan chocolate chip cookies with a cup of oat milk and a fancy video. I can't see how Easter Sunday could be any better. Oh, that's so awesome. And thank you for joining the Cookies on a Whim Club. That's so funny. And thank you for watching the episodes and thank you for the support. Okay, I'm out of here. Make sure you look after yourself and make sure you have a beautiful, amazing rest of your day. And you know what I'm about to say because I say it every single day. Bye! Bye!